recording. So again, this week we're going to look at uh, Unreal Blue, the UMG, which is basically Unreal's um, system for building interfaces and HUDs. And I'm going to go through these slides um, pretty quickly, and then we'll go back and we'll get into our game, and we're going to upgrade it um, from using you know Texon strings to basically basically running running them through what's called widgets. So so UMG is short for Unreal Motion Graphics. Uh, the UI designer is, is there to create interface like the title screens of HUDs in Unreal Engine 4 and so far in 5. Basically to work with it, we work with a widget blueprint. Specifically it is a user widget is what we are going to be using. Specialize, you know, specialize a blueprint um, so there's two modes, and you know the first one, the second one already, graph. Basically, it's like bl the blueprint graph. And they are blueprints, just don't get me wrong, but, they're, but there's also the designer mode, which is the visual layout of, of the designer panel. We're going to go through that. Um, a widget can be placed inside another widget, so a hierarchy widgets are displayed on the hierarchy t panel. Um, the other thing that we can do as well, um, one of the things that you'll do with the designer panel is you, you need to start, well, when we start, it will be with... Um, It, what we you'll need to do um, let me sign in um, you'll need to start with a panel so there's different components in the panel there is this, the, the, the common panel pieces right here so again widgets are interface components are added to the canvas panel and engine so here are the different pieces that we can work with so here they're building a title screen, and, and the way that they're building it is that there's, there's a, a image here, and then there is a button with an image on it, and another button with an image on it. So t game title, start, exit are all images. We don't have to use, and, and I don't actually have any, any of these images, so we're just going to use text for our purposes th for this week when we build, build the title, title screen. Um, game title image, again, this is, again, they're using an image and it's different properties, image size, the X and Y, um, tint. So basically, normally, an, your tint is going to be white unless you are changing the color of it in some particular way. So think of the tint as a multiple multiplier on it. So you, you've got like a white image, and you multiply that by red, the image would now be, it would be red. If that tint is green, that image is now going to be green. Again, most of the time, it is, the tint is going to be white. Again, they've got buttons with an image. Again, they've set a button here, and they've thrown an image on top of it. On it, it's a child of it. Um, for our purposes, we're going to use text because we don't actually have those images that they're showing. Um, again, buttons have different events: on click, on press, on release, on hovered, on unhovered. So, mouse is over the button. Mouse is let, was over the button. It's no longer no longer the button. That's basically what they mean by hovered. Uh, on press, on release, and again, we're going to use on clicked. And that will generate a event. And so, for their purposes, what they're doing is they're making the main game, the main game level in. Um, it's being set up basically in its own level, which, and then they're going to load the other level, uh, the game level for you know. If we were doing this with the the uh, coin collection game, we'd have our main menu, and then it would click and would load that other level. Again, here is button exit, and it's there's a quick game. Uh, basically, it's a quick the, no to, to actually quit the game, actually end the application. So here, they're basically setting up the the mouse cursor to be shown on screen. So here's get the player controller. Now, don't get me wrong; you are still getting, you're still doing input on the mouse while the cursor is on the screen. So that is something to be aware about. Again, this is begin play. They're going to show the cursor, and then they're going to go create the widget, and then they're going to add it to the viewport. So we'll talk about how they're talking about um, the widgets. And again, here they're setting up, here's a score, and here's a health bar for health. We're not going to, we're going to look at that quickly, but we're not actually going to implement that. You're going to do more like this score here. You'll have time, and you'll have score. 
HUD text. So here, um, we're actually going to use two, two so right now they're showing it as one um, one box here. We're going to go in and we're going to set this up using two, two um, text text fields. The first one's going to be going to be score colon, and that's going to be what we will call as a label. All right, and this is a technical term. Whenever you've got a label, it is static text. There is the concept of the field, and whenever you have a field, um, that is text that, that it is dynamic. It should be that is changing. Now, there's also having a text field that you can type into, and that's another scenario. Uh, we'll we'll look at that in a moment. Um, you can hear they're, they're get basically they're setting up the score. Where is the score? Score is in the first person character. So in the, the scenario here, they've set the score in the first person character. That's a very, that's a very odd place to put it, to be quite honest. <laughs> um, wow, I need to probably need to go through these slides. Um, it, well, for you, your score, right now, your score would, re, would be in your game mode. In a multiplayer game, that gets put, that actually would not be in the, you'd be looking at either the game state or um, a player state. And I'll actually, um, w when we get later on, um, there's actually an example I have up and running right now um, of a multiplayer example of the coin collection game. And I'm using player states and game states. Um, I've got, I think I'm, the one thing I haven't done yet is update the player name. And that's the last thing um, in that example that I'm working with the that class on with. But yeah, it's odd that the first person, that's basically in the pawn. That's something that would be e either in a single player game, that'd probably be in the player controller. And in a multiplayer game, it would that would actually reside in the player state class. And what's going on is then in a multiplayer game, um, the game state class and the player state class are replicated to everyone. So that's so that information is replicated to everyone. Um, at the game the game mode is not replicated. Other people's game player controllers aren't replicated on your machines as well. So it's just a matter of who has what, where, and why type type questions. Here they're showing the HUD process bar again. Health again. This is this would be two elements. Um, the health text here is one, and then this progress bar would be the second. And then basically there is uh, we can take a look at when we get it. We'll take a look at it quickly. Um, but we wouldn't be making, again, this is, hey, uh, here's a bar. And again, they got the colon here. We probably need to take that out. Here's on get health, and they're returning that, and that's being plugged into. Uh, what What's not being shown here, particularly with the HUD text here, um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to, there's a, basically you can bind, there's values that you can bind, that you can write a function to bind, to get the value, so every every time it draws, it's getting that information correctly, and to draw. So we'll I'll show that when we get into the engine itself. Get health using the HUD. Again, on Vimpy, they you we need to create these widgets, and this is odd. You have to create these um at uh, when you start the game up, and then you need to add them to the viewport. We will control. The other thing that we can do is we can control them as uh, their visibility. Do they show that? Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll show that. All right, let's actually just jump right into the engine. While that's running, basically, there are some exercises. Um, the big, big thing I'm really more concerned about is the collection game upgrade with better UI. And that includes a main menu. I, and I really would like you to use a main menu. You don't, um, I'm going to leave it open-ended, main menu being extra credit. But we really should do the extra credit do the extra credit. So you are the B group, the way I labeled it. Okay. The level uh, collection, there we go. All right, so here we are. So just so we have a, so we're gonna play. So we've got, basically we've got the HUD here. This is going to tick down um, and then this will be a, t a game over. So for our purposes right now, uh, first thing I want to do is actually go to bring up the content draw. Uh, 
Here's the collection mini game. No. All right, I'm going to actually make um, three folders. All right, the first one's going to be items. And this is going to be so there are uh, collectible, teleporting, the time orb, the pillar, and this material which came in with it. I'm going to move these here just to get them out of the way. Uh, the next one I'm going to create is going to be the HUD class. And I'm going to move the HUD into here. And then finally, the last one I'm going to put in is going to call it Core. And that's going to be my game mode and the pawn collection class are going to go into here. Um, if I had, again, those like game state class, the uh, player, a player, a custom player controller, or a custom, um, you know, a game state, player state, uh, player controller class. Those, those would be in there as well. All right. So uh, first thing that I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go to my game mode. And we'll put that up here. Why is this not compiled? That's weird. Um, we are going to change out. So under the collection game, there is this, this boolean is game over. Um, what I'm going to do is in, he and this is going to be a core class. We're going to actually go to, it's under the blueprint. We're going to make an enumeration, and this is going to be the, um, we'll call this app state enum. And I would want to call it game state, but unfortunately there is a game state class, so I want to try not to confuse myself using the, uh, two other classes. So this is why it's going to be the app state enum. And I'm going to go here and just bet, add three lines. Um, and then the, there's basically this enum is going to have three states. It's basically the main menu. The gameplay state. And then the end game state. I'm going to save this um, and I can close this right now. Now I'll, I'll make a new variable and this will be the app state and we will go and look for app state enum and I will compile and I will keep it as the main menu as our starting uh, app state. Um, so basically, what we're going to we're going to say is we're going to start in the main menu. For this reason, we need to go back to our event graph, and we actually need to break this link. In fact, we should only be starting the game when restart game gets called. All right. So I'll compile. Let's go back to our start game macro. And so the first thing that we need to do is actually take out, set the game over. We actually need to bring in the app state, uh, not get, I want to set. And just to make sure we are all on the, that we're, we're on the same page here, um, actually, this is going to be set to gameplay. So. The, I believe the only other there is the clock, and it has a set game over. We're going to remove that, and so this is going to go bring in our app state, and we'll set that to end game. And we get to go further than this direction, and we'll loop in like that. Not be as notoriously. So here we go. So this is this is again starting. Uh, again, we're replacing that this boolean with this with this enum. All right, I'm going to compile. I believe this is everything that we need to do in the game mode. Um, let's close that game, start game. We don't need the, yeah. 
So let's, let's save this. Let's close the game mode. And then we can go to our content draw. Um, and this is, we need to go to the HUD now. And for our purposes, um, we're going to add a new function. And we're just going to do draw um, main menu. And then we're going to go to begin play. And it's down here. So we're going to remove the target here. And this is going to be our app state. So we're going to get the app state. Um, we're going to take out the branch here. And we're going to basically use the switch on enum, the app state enum. So put reorder these. So we'll have the draw, basically have these just basically based on the state of the app. Here's the game HUD. And here is the draw game over HUD. So, so far, so good. Um, there's a lot more that we need to do. Um, this will still, we'll still be setting the game mode. Uh, we may not need this actually to go forward. This is something we could potentially take out. I'm going to leave for right now. But as we move forward, basically, this is going to go off. Where we're basically, we're going to essentially, um, basically, we need to set set widgets. So each of these are going to have, going to have widgets associated with it. So I know I'm going to create three variables. Um, this is going to be the main menu widget. And this will be of type the user widget. We don't need a new function. Uh, another, and this is going to be the game HUD widget and then one more will be the game over widget all right let's go back to our content drawing let's actually create the blueprint classes and I'm just gonna make the classes for right now and then we're gonna basically and we'll we'll set let's make the classes right now so again we're going to create a uh, blueprint class and type user widget and you'll see this these three boxes around a little heart looks like a heart and that's what you want you want we'll select that and this will be uh, BPW so I'm using the W in this case it's a blueprint widget underscore and this is going to be main menu um, one of the assignment pieces is another blueprint class again this will be a user widget This is going to be PPW, and this is going to be about. This is going to be in one of your lab assignments to build the about. And you can use this main menu to go back and forth between the about. Then the next is the blueprint. Another, again, another. These are all going to be all user widgets. Select PPW, and this is going to be, and for our cases, um, game HUD and then finally one more user widget select uh, BPW in this case it's going to be our game over um, there is again down under user interface you, we, we could have gone directly to widget blueprint down here Um, now that we've got these, I'm going to basically, I'm going to compile my HUD, uh, make sure I've got everything saved. Um, now I can go back to, to the event graph. And essentially we're going to do a set of, essentially we're going to uh, create a widget. We'll select the class. And it will be BPW, and we'll do the. We'll start with the main menu. 
we'll get the main menu variable over here and we'll use the set. And I'm going to plug in the, into here. The next one is I'm going to create a widget again. That's not what I want. There we go. And so this time the class is going, we're going to do the, the uh, game HUD. Again, we're going to set the, set the variable here now. And then we're going to, again, we're going to add to Did I not add to viewport? No, I didn't. What am I doing? Hold on. There we go. Why is it? Here we go, add to viewport. So then the next thing that we are going to do here, um, it basically is again, we're going to need to create the widget. Again, this one is going to be the BDW game over. We will assign, basically assign this here. And then finally, add to viewport. So basically, we've basically got a chain right here going on where we're, we're creating a widget, setting the variable that we'll use later on, and then putting it to the viewport. What we will do later on, um, and one of the things is that we're basically saying, we're going to just add our main widgets to the viewport, and then we'll just control how they sh uh, show up. So let's start with the draw main menu. So first thing is we want to uh, show hold on I want to go from uh, get player controller here we go and we want to set the show show mouse cursor in our case we we want to turn that on The, um, we're going to get a reference to the main uh, menu widget, and we'll use set visibility. Plug that in, and it will be visible. And we're going to need two more of these. So the game HUD, we'll, we'll grab that oh, up here. And we want the game over, get that version of that. And these we will set to hidden. Now there's more to this HUD that it can be collapsed, it can be hit not testable, cell phone hit, you know, there's other things that it can be doing. Um, but basically we're going to be jumping between visible and hidden here. So why are these all together? And this is basically what our, our these uh, these functions are going to be doing now. I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to not. So I'm going to copy this. I'm actually going to jump right into my game HUD. Uh, yeah, draw game HUD. I'm actually going to delete everything but the node. I'm going to copy in these nodes again. In the case of the game HUD, we're going to turn off the mouse. The game mo mode will be hidden, and then finally, the the we'll set the game game HUD widget to be visible. So the HUD basically is managing the widgets, and the widgets themselves are going to determine how things will be drawn. 
Again, we've got the game over widget. It's going to be hidden. And I'm just going to jump right into the game over, draw game over. And we can delete that and I can paste these back in. Try this again. Um, for the case of the game over HUD, I do want the, the mouse cursor to be shown. Um, again, main menu will be hidden. Game HUD will be hidden. And then the, finally, the game over widget will be visible. So. so we've got the infrastructure of basically the HUD. Basically, again, again HUD's going to manage all of the widgets. And that's how you should be thinking of the HUD class going forward. It's managing what's on the screen, what is the widgets on the screen. So let's now go, so let's go to, let's start with the, um, let's start with the main menu. Um, and let's actually, we don't, we can leave the HUD here. So let's go to the main menu. And basically, the first thing that you want to do when you set up is basically uh, your first, you want to put in a panel. And you're going to use the Canvas panel. There's the uniform and this grid, and they're more like, oh, I've got, you know, like if I, if I was doing an interface of like, like an inventory interface, I might use the uniform panel. But for right now, Canvas panel is kind of what you're going to be using. Designer friendly, laid out in arbitrary locations, anchored, Z order. Bad when you want to procedurally just generate widgets and place them in a container. So let's we'll start with the canvas panel. We're going to bring that down, anchor it onto the, 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 the blueprint here. So now all the other pieces are going to be underneath this. Um, and so for our purposes, again, this is basically, you can see right now, we can set up different sizes. So we're going to stay at 1280, uh, 720. All right, so we're going to stay here. Um, basically, I'm going to start with a uh, with text I'm going to then I'm going to I'm going to bring in another one because we'll we'll parent it to the button um, and then we will bring in a button so I'll parent this to the button so this I'm going to name basically um, start game And you can actually add more, like I can du duplicate this, you know, we, there's, and this could be like the end game button. And duplicate it one more time. And this would be like the about button. Cool. Um, not that useful at the moment. So I am, I'm going to just hide these for right now. Um, I'm going to grab the start game button. I'm going to move this down here. And we're going to start again uh, where it's positioned. I'm going to say, I'll say 200, 500. Uh, size uh, X, X obviously 100, maybe 300 would be a good block size. And 30 is probably too small. Uh, we probably want to go with like 50. And then we can go and click on the text inside. So we'll open up color and I'll pass, um, I think it's under font. Yeah, so we'll, we'll click here. Um, I actually want this to be black, make things easy. And then um, this I don't need to touch. Uh, then finally is the text blocks right here. This is gonna be, this is the, let's call it the game label. And so I'm actually going to go in here. I'm going to be basically do a collection mini game. I'm going to make, I'm going to leave it white. Um, but the size, ultimately, I do want to change. Uh, there'll be like 72. And uh, rather than being at 0, 0, I'm going to do at least like 100, 100 drop it down here size again it's, again, it's over wrapping but we'll say this is uh, 1000 and the size will say 100 
just so that the it has an actual box. It's the text is inside. So we compile. Uh, we go back to our and again I want to go to the the say, the start game, and I'm going to go to the text blocks right here, and we'll set that to be um, start game. Okay. So when we go to so basically the start game is basically going to go and call the start game um, the start game um, macro. It's an event that's going to call the macro essentially. So let's compile, and we can now jump over to the graph, and we'll click on the uh, start game button, and here is the events. We'll just click on on clicked, and for our purposes, when it gets clicked. What we want to do is, again, we're going to get game mode. We'll cast to uh, BP collection game mode so that we're a right version of the class. And then we can call restart game. So we'll just save this right now, and then we can then jump back to let's put the uh, game HUD up for the moment. So again, we're going to start with uh, a panel. Use the canvas panel. And then basically we're going to just drop in um, just multiple texts. And I'll do I'll do I'll do two two of them right now. But we'll ultimately be doing you'll be doing um, at least three. Uh, I mean, well, two two we've two. What I mean by two, I mean two different uh, value sets. So I'll do time and I'll do. The score right now. You should have the numbers collected uh, in yours as well. So I'm going to start by moving all of the these over left offset 100. And I'll go put this down, here. say 300. That's too much. So I'll start start there. Um, and these I'm going to move down. 300. Okay. So a color capacity. Again, I want to make these red. Oh, I want to keep the alpha one. So these will be red. And I'm going to double the size on these. All right. So the first one, I'm going to rename this. This is going to be time. Label, and this will be the time field. So I'm going to go again right in here and be type in time, and then for the time field, I'm actually going to use hashtags. I'm going to use three hashtags for our purposes, and I'm going to go make sure that our these will be anchors. Um, I want to set the two hundred by uh, we'll say uh, we'll do seventy five, and that looks pretty good. So I'm going to move the time field over. So the position is X. I'm going to put this at three hundred. So now it's sitting. So we click the. So there's a slight, slight overlap, but that's okay. So we're going to set, set them up in this particular way. All right. So the field right here, when we go look at the text, there is this section here for bind. We can actually create a new binding. And it's basically going to create a function here. So get te uh, time field text. Um, I'm going to break this node. And break this link because ultimately we're gonna do stuff and plug in this to this this field right here. Um, and our purpose is we're gonna get the game mode 
and then we do need to cast to our BP uh, collection game mode. And as the this version of this resonance, we can get our time remaining. And this will plug in over here, and this will be plugged in right here. And it will convert between text to, um, it's going to convert the integer to a text format. And we can compile and save everything. We can close this. Let's go back to the designer. This is going to be the score label. Let's move that out of the way. And then this will be, and we'll set the value here to score. And then this will be the score field. And the text block will use five hashtags. And then we'll click bind and create a new binding. Again, we'll break this link. Get the game mode. Cast to BP game collection. Sorry, like that. Get game score. And then we'll plug that in and we can do a conversion. Compile. And so now we've got our game HUD. So let's bring up the game over. And that's basically we're going to put down, um, again, I need a panel. And then I'm going to need a text. Again, throughout the main menu, I'm going to bring in multiple texts. Bring in a button. So this is going to be the return to main menu button. And again, the text in here will be return to main menu. Go look at the button. Uh, size basically is going to do 475. I'll go to the text here and go to make that black so it's easy to read. We'll go back to the button and obviously we're going to do uh, say 100 and then we'll do 500. So I'll drop it right there. And then we've got the text block right here. We'll move the position over like 100 just to, to anchor it. We'll bring this down to 200. Oh, that's the size. So position will be 200. And this will be a size of like 300. I'll do 500. And then the text box here is game over. We'll make this a size of 72. Make this the size 600. We'll make it red. And then with the, the button, drop, jump over the graph, again, on click, we get the game mode. Cast to the BP uh, collection game mode. Again, this casting, this is very common, normal. And then this is going to... Uh, We'll set the application state back to the main menu. Again, it's the first one, so that happens to be what we need. And that should handle this all. Now I've gone pretty, pretty quickly. So if we press play, here's the... So I've got things that are hidden. Hold on. Let's go back to the main menu for one moment. 
um, I am going to delete these for right now. There we go. So th that, that was just stuff that was there. Um, I can now go click start game and there we go. And I needed to move. I have not moved the score. So let's stop. Let's actually fix that right now. So that's in the game HUD. So what I messed up was here, the score field. Um, I moved, needed to move the position to, I believe, 600. This, this is 300. Uh, I moved this out to 300. Okay. There we go. So, compile, save everything. Go, let's go back. So, here's my button. It's working. Um, I need to. Oh, here we go. So, it, the cursor went away. So, you can see the. So the first thing I, that I'm going to go back to is, so for testing purposes, I'm going to go back to the game mode. And we did set um, time, uh, starting time. I'm going to set this to just five seconds. I'm going to compile. Basically, just, just for testing purposes. So I'm going to click game, and then here we go. Off it's going. And now it's in game mode. You can see that the cursor. I'll start the game again. And your version is fine. That's interesting. You can see that when the game over the cursor came. Again, I still have control of. I can still move around. Turn to the main menu. And start the game. start the game over again and so and that's pretty much what we are doing right now is we're moving over to uh the umg and again you can see like hey the the time like the game over they don't look blurry like we were scaling the text and it was looking not very good um we've got buttons there we go i had to click inside for it to And it's, it, you know, it's, I picked up the time orb and it's working just as fine. And yeah, I can still move around the main menu. And, I, and those are things that we can look at as potential fixes. Uh, we could potentially be, hey, let's get rid of our pawn type scenario and put in a spectator class instead. Uh, and there's there's lots of things that we could be doing. Again, we're building a single single map, being the entire application. And again, we're not we're building a simple a simple game. Um, you know, if we were to build something more out, you know, we would build a main menu map. And those main menu maps can get extremely complicated. Um, I'm going to actually bring up. Make sure my, my sound is off for the moment. Here we go. So here's the main menu. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyways, I mean, it's it, don't get me wrong. It's dice. They're an arm of EA. Um, and the, the reason I'm not pl playing the sound is because I don't want to deal with copyrights with the music. But this is this is the main menu map. It is a map, um, you know, and this is actually a map of the game city. Give it a moment, and then here it is. 
now bringing in this and here is just basically the main menu is like there's the, the front of this main menu and as you go to different parts of this map of this main menu it is going to uh, basically doing different uh, camera camera loops through the city what was that So yeah, so so your main menu can get very complicated and, and convoluted as you desire it to be, and I think Mirror's Edge is one of the most polished main menus um, that they produce that's been produced with the Unreal Engine. That, this, again, this is the first uh, Mirror's Edge game, and this is, I believe, it's Unreal Engine, which it's either two point five or it's three, and I can't remember. It's been it's been a while so this is the capabilities of what we're talking about of like what can you do with your main menu map main menu um tons of possibilities what was that it's just importing assets yeah yeah yeah. No. Well. Well. Let's let's be let's be let's be clear. There are you know there are skeletal meshes which are basically uh, uh, meshes that have been rigged. There are static meshes that are just just the, the mesh itself. There's no rigging to it. Like most of those those assets in that scene that you're flying through are st are static meshes. They're not they're not rigged. I'm talking about like just like HUD elements like the HUD. Oh, that's just another widget. That would be a widget. You you would create you'd create another another. It's a, it's a blueprint class. And so that that so basically the the um, the the widget would be attached to your player. So basically, you'd be asking. Um, so health would be something that would be stored on the pawn. So basically what, what ends up happening is that the widget's going to ask who is the player controller attached to me that, that I'm, that I'm cause, cause the HUD is attached to the player, player controller. So the first thing is that the HUD asks, who's my player controller and gets a reference of that and then gets a reference from the player controller to the pawn that it's controlling. Then you honestly, that from there you then cast to the correct pawn type to get to the correct class so you can get the current health of your of the pawn. You know, the other mana would be the same thing except it's going to go grab the mana. And then it knows and there's probably going to be a it will probably grab actually two values. It would grab your current level of mana and your max what would be your max level of mana? Because then that will that sets the, the the level of the of the the fluid in the orb, effectively. I mean, they're they're effectively prog you know like that health bar. They're just basically stylized health bars, and you could you know and as you go on, it could be get even more stylized. Like they're um, like Valve in Half Life Alex actually did a, a fluid liquid in their bottles. And everyone went crazy over it. Um, you could have like that, like a bottle, and there could be like, you know, a little bit of like, you know, the w water on it. And basically, you're controlling basically the how like that fluid level be more. And, it, and that's just basically, hey, artists, go 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 wild. And this is more in this case. Um, we're talking, we're dealing with two D assets. I bet you there's probably a way to do some three D rendering in there as well. Uh, I just don't know off the top of my head off what what where you would how that would be set up, but it wouldn't. I could I could see a widget with a 3D you know 3D asset being rendered in it. There's there's I'm saying there's ways to do it. I just don't know off the top of my head how how I I'd have to do a little bit of research to be like how to set that up. It is very much beyond the scope of science. Yeah, I'm just trying to get again right. I'm trying to get you to do just this. Start game, and I picked up a time war. <laughs> you know, game over. 
And again, idea here, you would probably have start game, end game, about button. And those are things that you, again, the about, you know, you're asked to do, to make an about button that comes in and brings in a panel. Basically, it brings in another widget. You know, I'd probably basically have another, you know, the widget pop up here and be like, and just, and on your about screen, just, just throw garbage. I don't really care what's on the about screen. You could do the, um, there is, if you don't know what to put on something, uh, it's called lorem ipsum. There's the lorem ipsum generator. Lorem ipsum.io. <laughs> Literally, you know, how many paragraphs, sentences, generate. And it's, it looks, it looks like English. It looks like Latin, which looks like English, which is the same letters as Latin. Latin is using the same letters as English, effectively. Um, it looks, it looks like it could be English-ish. It looks kind of like Latin. It's more like piggish Latin in that regards. Yeah, Greek. They, that's the other way they would refer to it as Greek. This is not Greek, but but they but but the yeah, the 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 technical term is that you'll hear people refer to it. They threw in Greek, which is not. Yeah, well, I know people who are who are from Greece, so that they they found that weird. But yeah, no, just you know, grab, grab that, throw that as a as a as a paragraph in, um, grab that, put that as a paragraph as. Uh, of text in your on the about you know I, I don't really care what's on the about just show me that you can bring up a panel and put put away a panel what was that oh god no 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 that's beyond the scope of the, this assignment also 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 it's copyrighted material you got to be careful about that it is a Rick roll, but still. You just have to put an image, like li literally. You just have to, you could put you could put a frame of of uh, from that video on your about screen, and I will hear the vid I will hear the song just from that one image. You lost the game. Uh, that that's mean. Um, it is it is October, but you know when we get to December, there is. Uh, Whamhalla is that's if you hear uh, Last Christmas by uh, Wham, um, you have gone to Whamhalla is that game. So the the goal is not to listen to that song as much as possible, as long as possible. Last year I got Whamhalla two days before Christmas because of a cover of the song. I counted a cover in my case and I, that got me. Uh, stupid, stupid stuff that can get will go on. So it is I've gone. I know I've gone pretty fast. Pretty, it is pretty straightforward. I mean, you are pushing basically values to the screen. Any questions about this week's lab? No, I forget what the second assignment is. But but if you if you basically do the about screen and I'm, I'm probably gonna um, I'll probably re relook you will probably if it's not your section it will be the day section that I'm gonna re rewrite because it's not very clear Fo focus on doing the about screen like that bring that panel on on the main menu so basically the idea is that the main menu has another widget that it controls that's the that's the point of that assignment um, I forget what the other one is doing. You can ignore it, but as long as you get the main, if you come back and you get the your collection game with these using the main the HUD using these widgets as opposed to us blunt brutally drawing to the screen to the screen, we're you're probably in a better place. I'm gonna stop the recording. Here.